Dave. How you doing? Fine. How are you now? Good. Huh. Unbelievable all what's going on in the show and it's just getting bigger and bigger. So anyway, yeah. I'd like to have a tour. Go through, I see some beautiful things, as it said, so let's just take a little tour through here. Yeah, um, unusually for me, uh, I'm actually, instead of portraying a lot of the new finds, mm -hmm. I'm saving those for the main show and concentrating on putting out some of Herbaboda's collection here. Oh, okay. Which, as you know, was, until a few days ago, most of it was on display at that the museum correct. down the yeah. road. So, <laughs> packed it up at the museum, unpacked it here, mm -hmm. and it's... Not quite ready, but we're getting there. Good. So I'll show you a few highlights if you okay, want. Okay, yeah? great. Yeah, this is this nice. This is fantastic. Isn't that a jewel? This is a magnificent thing from uh, Afghanistan. Yeah, he was Double a little secretive. Parts. Yeah, oh yeah. He, he told me he's got this killer tourmaline and uh, never saw it. That's choice. Now, Absolutely you know, choice. You know, buying Herb's collection, it was like buying two collections. Oh, yeah. You get Afghanistan, Pakistan, That's comprehensive right. suite. That's right. But most people don't realize his depth in the classics, in the historic European material. Exactly. And there were so many good yeah, things. Look at the manganite. Oh, my God. For example. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. These are very hard to get, these elves held. Manganites, are, you don't see them on the market anymore. I think they were mined in the 1880s. Oh yeah, it goes yeah. way back. This is a nice Kongsberg. Yes, it is. Love the silvers. Look at that thing. Yeah, it's choice. Yeah, but the thing, the thing about place. Herb is, you know, he was a collector's collector. He right. he collected without regard to size. That's right. Or species if or he anything. Liked it, he bought yeah. it. And some of his favorite pieces were some of the smallest. So what That's I didn't right. even know till I had the chance to buy the collection mm -hmm. was that he had an extensive thumbnail suite beyond that, that famous correct. set that he took to shows and exhibited. That's right. Um, yeah. So we have a number of those yeah. thumbnails. He had his own little private, quiet collection, and yeah. and he really did gather good things. Now that said. Stibio tantalite, yeah. canary yellow. Never yeah. seen it before. That's rare stibio tantalite, canary yellow. Killer. For example, that one is very well known. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like yeah, a I'll scepter this. tourmaline there. Look at that. Oh, that is fantastic. You know, I haven't seen this. You never told me about that. Do you know what's nice about it? It's a true scepter. That thing is just hovering right over there, and it's terminated. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes they're not terminated. They're kind of broken away, so it's like an etching and hollowness, but this is a true scepter. Film it without me in the way. And now, we'll make it a pair. Wow. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And even that's turned. That's good. See, yeah. both of them are terminated at the bottom. But they found these crystals that are broken off at the bottom, and you don't know. It's just, it grew down, but it broke, they broke it upward. You know what I'm saying? See, these are true, complete specimens. Yeah. They're terminated at both ends. There's some people who say that's the best bassinazite. I've never seen a jemmy one this size. I've seen some smaller ones, and I've seen bigger ones, but not jemmy like that. Yeah, I have not seen a yeah. better one. It's, it's fabulous. I'll show you if I can point yeah, out sure. one really interesting piece yeah. and then see if you explain to me how mm -hmm. it formed. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mineralogist. Oh, my God. This is his triple kunzite. Oh, isn't that cute. So it's, each one is terminated all around. If yeah. you saw them individually, mm -hmm. you would think they were three different crystals. Yeah. And yet, they yeah. go together. Well, they went down the cleavage uh, the plane and they separated. How, how far they were separated in the ground, but I can rest assure you, because the perfect cleavage, for some reason, could have been earthquake or something separated this thing. So they just got separated by uh, uh, cleaving off, and then it re-etches, re-crystallizes over the uh, cleavage. So if you look at these carefully, you can see it, that it re-crystallize over each uh, piece. So each one you could truly call a, a complete crystal. crystal. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Technically, you can. Beautiful. So, Dave, this is uh, the front of our room here, a few choice things. Yes, you do have. And I wanted to show you a few I, things here. This catches my eye right off the bat, this long, 
beautiful Heliodor bullet. I have to be honest, I've never <laughs> seen a bullet Heliodor. Oh, this big? Yeah, but not like this. I'd never seen anything like that. We gave it steroids. Wow. <laughs> With a quartz crystal. That is really Isn't something. that neat? Oh, it's fantastic. That was actually mine last fall. Okay. Now, if that was an aquamarine, it'd still be unusual because it's such a, a, a long, big a bullet type. Uh, 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 he, uh, if it was an aquamarine, let alone be Heliodor. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. This is a new find, even mm -hmm. if it was once a decent rock and it's now been bastardized into jewelry, mm -hmm. but it's worth showing. Oh, the opals this from is, Ethiopia? Yeah. Wow. A very nice one. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Can you catch that? I think you've Beautiful. seen them around the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, do you know the prices have doubled since oh, last year? Oh, yeah. The Chinese are People buying them. People are buying them all up. Yeah. Yeah. But, boy, you have to watch it. You have to know the crazing and the, from not crazing. Yeah. That, that's an education itself. But, uh, if you get some kind of a guarantee, some people give you a year guarantee, some say this, some say that. Uh, what you need to do is really talk to GIA and see what research they've done on these and what they really know about them. They can give you a lot of feedback because they're testing lab, and I'm sure, sure they've done a lot of testing, but that's a beautiful string. Reticulated cerusite's gorgeous. This is from Sumab. the 1976 pocket. Wow, look at that. These are so hard to get because the mineral is fragile and, and surviving as long as it has, it's been well cared for. But the, these are very hard to get now, very yeah. hard to get. Oh, yeah. That's and you don't get many recovered because of the weight and that's the fragility. Right. That's right. You never want to put that in hot water or any water. Yeah, that's wonderful. This is nice, I think, because it's a cluster. Oh, How many yeah. clusters have you seen? Exactly. Few, right? Uh, it, it, very few. See, it's all reticulated in there, and it's, it's a, a superb example. I always wanted this, and I tried to get this out of her. Needless to say, you didn't want to sell it, and I don't pester people to get uh, things out of them. But what makes it so fine is highly brilliant, the modifications, the gemminess, and good blue color with a white background. That's a superb thing, and everybody loves this. Yeah, that's a great piece. Yeah. I'll tell you what, how about I show you a few surprises that are in back Alrighty. because they just came in. Sure. So step into Let's my bathroom. See some Nordoff Galenas yeah. in the distance here. Well, we'll get one in here. Okay, the, these are, yeah, yeah, these are actually also from the Aboda collection. Yes. But as I said, he was a collector's collector. He mm -hmm. loved the classics. That's right. And uh, both these pieces were actually in the recent issue of the oh, Min Record. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I don't think Herb ever met a Neudorf Galena he didn't like. He yeah, seems he to love yeah. them all. Yeah, he really does like So them. this piece was in the collection of the Archduke Stefan wow. of the Habsburg Empire. Okay. And, and original uh, Yeah, I think you know, right? These were printed on the Hungarian National Currency Press. It's actual real gold foil on currency paper. I do believe that. It okay. stopped the printing presses to print this guy's mineral labels. Holy cow. In oh, the er early 1800s. Okay. So this was Probably the Archdukes. Fantastic. Yep. And then another one Herb had is this well-known piece, which was painted by Equit. So here's, here's the painting, Fantastic. and here's the piece. Well, how about that? It sure is. And this one actually has some good history. So Clarence Bement would have bought this in the 1880s okay. for $4. $4, unbelievable. A lot of money for a Galena. Oh, back yeah, then. $4 is a lot of money. Darn right. Yeah. But and today, it you was... don't want to know what that's worth. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, and this was preserved in the American Museum, exchanged to Aboda in 1980, mm -hmm. and kept. Good for him. What's the story on that? I like these. Uh, uh, yes. It's blue, it's with oh. a pit of light. Very showy thing there. Look at this thing. I like that. that. Any of these big ones, when they don't have damage, it's very hard to get these. And I've been to Pakistan myself, a fraction compared to her, but I've been there nine times. He's been there about 200 times. But getting a thing out of the country like this in this wonderful condition and that wonderful blue shade that this has, this is a, a very fine museum piece. I love that thing. You know, this came yeah. out 20 years ago. 
Okay. It was one of the Years earlier ago. ones. Okay. This was in a collection. Doesn't surprise me. This is gorgeous. And it's got, as you say, that unusual oh, color. Yeah. And then it has a, like a violet at the very top, goes right into a rare shade of blue uh, with wonderful lapidolite. Good piece. Like it. You got that? Mm -hmm. This one actually just came in. This is out of an old collection. Mm, looks like Appetite. That is an Appetite. Wow. And what makes this very fine and unusual is that they're large crystals, they're Appetite in this bug. And I think I heard you say waterfall, and it does look like a waterfall. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, streaming down and all that. That's a cute nickname they gave it. But this is very rare because it's a, the violet type. And this is from where? Golconda mine. Okay. Brazil. Hell of a thing. Never seen anything quite like that. I've seen other type, but you don't see things like this. It's pretty dramatic. Oh. No. Yeah. Wonderful. No, yeah. Heavy, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful thing. Well, I was going to show you a few different styles yeah. here. In particular, this is the new pocket. This oh. came out in the last yeah. few months. It almost looks like Sumev or uh, Moroccan. Boy, that is fantastic. That area has really improved because when they were getting these out a couple years ago and I was attempting to get it, can remember when I was uh, trying, you, you took one. Yeah. They, they all had nicks on it and I kept telling them, I don't want it, you can't have nicks on these things. No, oh, these are beautiful. So we now have they these. They finally learned. Yeah, these robust large crystals. Yes. I was going to show you this one I call the wave. Okay. Ooh. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Yeah. It's like a big wave. And this beautiful chatoyant malachite, that's another thing that adds to them. Beside the white matrix, you have the chatoyant um, uh, malachite right through here. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. I mean, the diversity there is amazing. Here's, here's yet another style. Oh, yeah, look at that. You think that was Bisbee? Yeah. Perfect, beautiful. And every pocket is a little different. Yes. I think I think this place is the great locality oh, of the decade. It's a major, major discovery. Yeah. I see a yellow thing or greeny shell. It looks like a mimetite. Let's see yeah. that. This is from the 1988 find at the uh, Cobar location oh in Australia. God. That thing is fantastic. Don't see many of those oh, around. Yeah, that's a major, major thing. Oh, yeah, this is... Killer. It's one of the best mimetites in the world. You think so? Oh, 100%. Yeah. One of the best. You know, I, I can't get over the uh, the argument for the jemmy ones from Sumab being the best yeah. because they're jemmy. Yeah. But oh, this, this is robust. Oh, it's a fantastic thing. Get these big, chunky crystals like that, beautiful color. And whatever it is, mimetite, uh, it's a very delicate mineral when they're trying to get them out of the ground. This thing held up so well that, no, this is definitely one of the best mimetites I've seen, period. Really? I put certainly uh, half a dozen or so. Thank I'd you. have to see the other ones, but that thing's a major thing. Don't, well, I don't, don't think, underplay that. I don't that. think there were that many. I heard very it was under, under 20 pieces uh, of it, quality. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. This oh. is the new material from Zambia. Okay. Watch your fingers Citrine. sharp. Citrine color. Wow. Can you get that color? Mm -hmm. I've never seen citrine Jap Japan law twin quartz before. Never seen it. If I saw it, it might have been a little minor thing that I forgot about, but this is a museum type piece. That's a hell of a thing. Now this is as it came out. This is not clean. I see. There were, very, very there were several dozen twins and hundreds of okay. singles. Okay. So there's a number of these around the show. Okay. That's actually a non-stream ruled sapphire. Okay. It's 300 that's, grams. That's from the load deposit, really, Correct. alluvial. You know, these are family-run mines, a oh, consortium yeah. of families. Very Each owns so. a pit very, or a shaft. Yeah, very hard to get these large, and this happens to have a bluish-green color. I've seen one larger, but it was kind of a rust inside of it. It wasn't truly, it has real color. This yeah. has genuine color. Now there's a little iron oxide staining that got into here, but this is actually a sapphire crystal with a bluish green to it. The problem with most of the big ones is they end up stream rolled in the gravels. That's true. And the yeah. mines just today don't produce many. Yeah, Not that's in the right. Size. You got it. Especially size. Size and it hasn't tumbled. 
It's a very, very, very difficult thing to get. It's a great piece. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite piece? The whole room. I'll take the room. I'll give you a hug. <laughs> that was a nice thing to say. No, you, you, you got fabulous things. No question about Thanks, it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, very, you'd be very proud. Christoph. Hi, Dave. How, How are, are you? you? Good to see you again. Oh, yeah. Brian, yeah. It's always welcome a pleasure. back. And how do you like the show? It's doing very well, and uh, beautiful weather we have. So, well. yeah, we, the show was great. The weather is great, so yeah. everything is just perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I see some magnificent things here. I'd like to have you Thank explain you. to me. And, <laughs> Thank and, you, Dave. I I try my best to yeah. bring uh, year after year some uh, yeah. fine specimens. Yeah. But, uh, this is a, a piece from uh, Hobobos, which is in the Brandberg area. Mm -hmm. And um, this piece is very special because it's quite um, exceptional to find so many scepters yes. on the same piece. Yes. Most of them are loose crystals. Yeah. And uh, that one has four scepters. You have some prehnite on the sides as yes. well. And uh, it's quite uncommon, yeah. yeah very, I got it. Very in, uh, different. Yeah, I got yeah. it in Namibia. Yeah. This is one of the new finds from the show. Okay. You have calcoparite with uh, with siderite. Yeah. Oh. It's from Maybe. China. Okay. Um, there is two or three localities that the Chinese dealer are talking about, but mm -hmm. nobody knows exactly where it comes from. For sure, it's China. They said Inner Mongolia, and then we think that it's probably from Sichuan province. Okay. But we have not the we have not the, the mine yet. We might okay. know it in the next weeks. No, that's that's nice. And um, by the way, in that finds, I have something really special to show you. Okay. What I consider uh, as one of the best, maybe the best one from the wow from the find. Okay. Look at that. Oh, it's fantastic. No, it's like a big flower up here. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah that's magnificent. Yeah, it's and this came out, what, a few months ago yes, or so? Yeah. 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 So we, this is basically well, new for China. Year, last year there were a few small pieces, but oh, okay. this year we got a, a bigger pocket. And, Very uh, good. This one is really the best one I have seen so far. Oh, it's beautiful. But I was lucky enough to, to find this... Uh, this beryl oh. from Madagascar. Oh, that's wonderful. It's really a significant piece. So well, this is new material. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, yes, Even with a phantom, yeah. that's very yeah. unusual for mm -hmm. a burrow like that. Yeah. And then the inclusions, it has inclusions, but they're actually very showy. It looks mm -hmm. like a plant life in it. Yeah, it gives some life that's to the That's wonderful. To the it's kind of aqua heliodor. Yeah. It's between. Mixture, it's yeah. Between, yeah. Oh, that's a yeah, lovely yeah, crystal. It's a beryl. And that's Madagascar. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's all right. Yeah, from south, southeast. That's of a beautiful crystal. And the last thing I wanted to show you, mm -hmm. it's also a beryl from Madagascar. Okay. It's not a, a new find. It's a find uh, about four or five years ago. Oh. Beryl as well. Beautiful. They, they call it Lagoon Beryl. It's, I see. It's between the aquamarine and the emerald. And same, it's one of the very few has been saved from the cutting. Yeah. And, uh, and see, they want to cut them up. They feel there's yeah, more, yeah. more uh, value, value in cutting, exactly. but that's starting to change now because minerals are becoming more valuable than even yeah. the cut stones. Yeah. You're so, absolutely right. Yeah. It's exactly what's happening with the Tanzanites. Okay, great. Thank Keep you again, Dave, work. and uh, awesome. Brian, for your great job. See you next year. Great. Gene, yes. you have a surprise to show me, I understand. Something that's very important, and I'm anxious to see this item. Well, it's very, very large, and therefore it's very hard to uh, show you, but I'll do my best. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually something that I saw at the uh, Tucson show last year. Okay. And um, I picked up one, and another person picked up the other one, this one that I have which is a very, very, very wonderful Burmese ruby. Wow. It's a superb specimen. Uh, it's not mine at this time, Yeah. Uh, but you know that I love gemstones, very and this is, so. I just consider one of the finest rubies I've ever seen. I don't know what your opinion is, 
But you're I've never it. seen one this quality in my life as a mineral specimen. I've seen a small th thumbnails. I've seen some real big ones with matrix that are also new. But as far as quality and being a Burmese stone, the whole crystal's there. It's hexagonal. It, it's totally a euhedral crystal. And um, I, I have to be honest, it's the best one I've ever seen. These are very hard to get a hold of. Yes. Uh, one thing, that, that when they find the Burmese ruby, uh, most of them are very etched out. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're very etched out. They're, they're, this has beautiful smooth faces, both uh, the top and the bottom and the sides. The color is fabulous. I cannot remember seeing a better ruby crystal. But one of the things that I just like about it, you know, being having studied the defects in crystals and so yeah, forth, yeah. is the growth formation. That's right. the growth, uh, that shows you how the crystal grew mm -hmm. on this particular on this basal plane here, yeah. and it is just a, I think an ex excellent example of a uh, of a corundum crystal, the right. ruby variety. That's right. Uh, with color and everything, I just I just love this crystal. Oh, it's fa it's fabulous. Yeah, this is a highly important specimen. Congratulations. Thank you. I'll take this home with me. <laughs> my, my pleasure. <laughs> Mike, hey, good to see you. Nice seeing you. And you've Brian, been so busy trying to get a hold of you. You've been really busy. I the think... whole town has been busy. And this whole Westward Look Hotel has been so busy. It's, it's unbelievable. It's been unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's certainly the most people I've ever seen come to this show. Exactly. Crazy. Let's I mean, just start from the left to the right. That, that that sapphire crystal group. Very, very difficult to get regular sapphire crystals like this, this shade of blue. This is kind of like cornflower blue, what they call it, right. sapphires. And uh, this is double terminated. That's double terminated. Uh, this is actually a very hard thing to get because the sapphires you usually get like from Sh Sri Lanka are uh, tall and they're kind of like scalahedra and everything. But this type of form is uh, very scarce. Well, in the in blue, I matrix. hadn't seen any that blue. Oh, you don't see these anymore. It's hard to get these. Yeah, that's old Minerva mine. Yeah, it Minerva is. number one mine. Yeah, very fine. And then the ones from Europe have these uh, pointed crystals, and this is a, a totally different type. Uh, what, where is this from? What's this is it? Southern Illinois. It's yeah, uh, Southern Minerva Illinois. number one. Mine. Okay, very good. Yeah, that's very fine. Not only have a matrix, you have a beautiful smoky quartz to boot. So this is uh, really a, a choice specimen. And then it's all there, and it's all perfect. Lovely piece. That is really pretty. This is actually quite nice. See, they're very hard to get these good heliodors like and this. And this is also from Madagascar, yeah, which actually very nice. makes it. Yeah, that actually could be set up like that. Yeah, it's yeah. all terminated. Yeah. You said you have some hidden treasures. Well, I don't know if they're hidden treasures. <laughs> they haven't made the case yeah, yet. Okay. <laughs> Well, isn't that a lovely piece? What I like about this, it goes up and down rather than wrap around because right. I've seen this type where it's wrapped around. Smithsonian has the best of those in the world. And the Bancroft, when I bought uh, their collection, it had a wrap. But this is going up and down. That's the very opposite, unusual. Yeah, opposite I never direction. Saw that way never seen that before. This was the other style from oh, last year. Wonderful. Okay. And Look at um, that. That's beautiful. Yeah, great architecture oh, on that one. It's fantastic. Fine rubellite tourmaline, double terminated. That's a jewel of a specimen. That's from Very good. Mozambique. Okay. Now, there's another crystal just about the size of a different shade of green and so forth. This is nice and bright and pink and lively and gemmy. That's a lovely crystal. And it's totally different in color than the other Mozambique we filmed the, uh, this week. This is a fine piece from the Champion Mine in oh, Keweenaw County. Oh, isn't that nice? It'd be huge. With the With herringbone. These, yeah, the herringbone feathering like. Oh, that's fantastic. Get that, can you get that? Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, there's that's a hell of a thing. Yeah. Like usually it. see if you see that it's usually small pieces, but boy, what a hunk. 
This. Oh, yeah, you did mention that you had a stock special. Nala. That the is stock something Nala. else. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. And what makes this is the combination of the wonderful feldspar crystals with the clear quartz crystals and with the beautiful uh, bicolor tourmalines. And also in this box is one of the largest carolites on oh, Matrix, yeah, I very think. Fine. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Boy, oh, these things dried up real quick. They hit, yeah. they hit a nice batch of them, but boy, they're hard, to, and especially the size and quality. Yeah, it's an extraordinary thing. Okay. That's great. All right. Yeah, wonderful things. Dave, there. Keep up the you. good work. Good and, see you, big guy. Yeah. See you up on the mountain. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Marcus, how you hey, doing? Hello again. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you again. And uh, you moved from the Pueblo Inn downtown uh, Tucson, and you're up at the Western Look here, and you got a fantastic exhibit up here. I'm looking in here. Wow, Tanzanite. Yeah, I mean, that just boggles the mind. Yeah, another suite you of said Tanzanite. You got I had one to show us. down at the River Park that you yes. filmed, and that's the stuff I, I saved for the uh, Westwood Look show. Exactly. Here. I mean, first of all, the Overall composition and the termination, everything is perfect. It's a gorgeous thing. Yeah, and, this is beautiful. And this shows the best trichrism I've ever seen on a, on, a, yeah. on a tanzanite, actually. It's a complete crystal. Let me just turn it around, okay. and then you can light that thing up. So you have uh, the purple Ooh, color here, oh yeah, right? right? Then you have the when blue. You turn around, you have the blue. Yeah, see that? That's two. And and the best thing. I've ever seen on, on a tanzanite is, I hope you can catch it with a, with yeah. a camera. Oh my God. Yeah, it looks, looks like a ruby red. Holy you know? cow. Ruby red. That's a, let me see that. I've <laughs> never seen one like that. It's unbelievable. Oh my God, that's an extraordinary color. They've gotten better, they've gotten bigger. Yeah. Absolutely talk, talk extraordinary. About bigger, I have to show you one piece that's really impressive. So I have to God, hide it a look little at the size. <laughs> and turn the light. Oh, <laughs> but you see the size probably look already. Look at this thing. <laughs> Holy cow. How many carats is it weigh? It's 2.2 okay. kilo, kilos. Oh, so 2,200 wow. gram yeah. times oh. five. Yeah. Oh. That's 11,000 yeah, carats. Yeah, 11,000 plus <laughs> carats. Oh, that's fabulous. I think we talked about it the other day, saying or talking about the best or world's best crystals. Yes. I mean, all I can say is this is by far the biggest and I've never seen and the like most this. complete crystal in this yeah. size I've, uh, yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah, it's all complete around. Yeah. Wow. Oh my, oh my God! Look at this. I can't believe this. This emerald has to be an inch and three quarters in diameter. It looks like it's about almost three inches long. It's on a calcite matrix. It is Columbia. What is the other part of the Columbia? What part of Columbia it's, is it from? It's coming from Cosquest. Cosquest. And it was mined seven, eight years ago. Okay. Roughly. Yeah. What a color and uh, size. And the thing that's so important about the spe specimen being preserved, mineralogically speaking, <clears throat> and for a collector, is that if that was all gem, it cut it right up. No, it wouldn't be It'd here. Be history. It would, yeah, be history. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be here anymore. And here, they, they studied it out, and with the interest of minerals that's going on today, this deserves a home, and that is a major, major yeah. specimen. God, what a I'm, specimen. I'm surprised this, this survived. Like it's a oh, super fine. Look at this fine aquamarine. aquamarine. It's like a like oh, a this is a, like, like a, 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 la <laughs> a laser rod. <laughs> Look at this. This is a natural aquamarine. It's obvious. I can see all the mm -hmm. crystal faces here, and this thing is gem clear, beautiful blue. And when you get the, these crystals, this jemmy with this perfection of of the facets, brilliance in that deep color, in a crystal that isn't much wider than this. This is an extraordinary gem crystal. Mm -hmm. This is fa fabulous. A deep, deep green going into a deep indicolite blue with calcite. Is it calcite or quartz? That's quartz. It is quartz, yeah. Okay, so anyway, terminated. 
Uh, but you do say you have to put the light behind it, but it well deserves it, and you're showing it very, very well. But that is exactly. one hell of a turmoil. It, it's, it's an it's older old piece. It, it's from Santa Rosa. It was, was okay. found in the 80s, early 80s, actually. Okay. And I, ha I have it for a while, and I was always thinking, how does it play it? Yeah. Because it's pretty dark, to be yes. honest. You know, when you hold it here, That's right. you don't really see That's the chaminess right. and the color. Yeah. So. Uh, now with this new LED technology, you can put some light behind. Yes. And you see how oh, it's jammy wonderful. it is. It's like, you know, 100% jam and the, those two colors. Dave? Thank you so much. Thank you. We, big Stopping help by. today. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Dave. How are you? I made it to your room. It's been so busy. I know. It's a lot of people Probably here. the busiest year for the Westward look so far. And Very we're 11 so. years strong and running. That's right. So. And the thing of it is, they've added two more uh, casinos there to, to sell yeah, out Yeah, we've of had it. more dealers yeah. at the Westward look than we've ever had. And there's a ton of people outside yeah. for opening day. And we're yeah. really excited to make this the premier location for yeah. people to see fine minerals in Tucson. Yeah. Well, this was mined in the summer, well, our summer, 2011, August. Okay. It's winter in Bolivia when it came yep. out. Uh, this is from the Wanuni mine, mm -hmm. which is the largest tin mine in the world, and it's a gigantic mountain, essentially, of solid tin mm -hmm. that has a really prosperous phosphate zone that produced, arguably, some of the world's finest Vivianite specimens, along yeah. with things like ludlamite right. and some unusual minerals like a hyalite. It's the type locality for a hyalite, and yeah. it's often inaccessible. This phosphate zone is closed off to the miners because they want them mining tin there and when the government is in charge and they're running things they don't want them taking off on their lunch break or anything else no. to mine phosphates because they need that tin ore because that's where right. the money is. Right. No value for the miners or the company in these yeah. phosphates. Yeah. But some brave miners went in and pulled out a fair number I would say of really world-class Vivianites Very good. the likes of which we haven't seen on the market in over a decade give yeah. or take yeah. the it color coming greener. through yeah. those crystals yeah. is incredibly saturated yeah. and the great thing about it because Vivianite is a really sensitive mineral mm -hmm. often you don't have luster on the crystals right. they they can easily become oxidized or coated by something else or there's a solution in the pocket yeah. that ruins the luster and these are extremely sharp with great luster really good gemminess Beautiful. and some of these are doubly terminated if you turn around yes. the back tip to tip not a ding on there yes. and very good size for the species well, so that's great near the chinese mongolian border mm -hmm. there's been a new scarn zone opened up that's producing some really interesting material okay. including these Androdite garnets that range in color from an olive green to somewhat of a yellow mustard color to even a deep reddish brown. Yeah. And they are some of the most interesting scarn garnets I've seen from any locality, mm -hmm. especially a piece like this that has such large distinct crystals with amazingly good luster. Yeah. And check out the isolation on some of these dodecs oh, yeah, here. Very much it's so, not yeah. just a big intergrown cluster, but right. there's relief. There's a three-dimensional right. quality to the piece yeah. that you really don't see in garnets from any environment, mm -hmm. not just this kind of environment. Yeah. So to me, this was a, an important thing that most people don't really go after minerals from scarn zones because right. there's not a lot of colorful stuff there. Yeah. And, you know, my forte is to <laughs> gravitate towards the stuff that's maybe not as colorful. <laughs> as is typical with some scarn deposits, you get magnetite from time to time. Oh, yeah, and nice. this yeah. large Big dodec size. is one of the largest magnetite crystals I've ever seen from anywhere, not just this mm. deposit. Mm. I think there may be a few out there that are larger, but this is certainly impressive for the yes. species. Okay, it's a fluorite, and it has a golden color. Yeah, a rich honey bleeding. color, yeah. a really unique color yeah. for fluorite. This is a mineral that everybody knows occurs in virtually every color of the rainbow, yeah. and we've never really seen fluorites this color from anywhere, not just China. This yeah. is around the Tongbei region, according to my Chinese friends who okay. I bought it from, and you can see when backlit, this is a distinctive Ew. hue of orange, golden orange, however yeah. you want to describe it. To add a little bit more color to the afternoon here, yeah. I have a dioptase right. from the Congo. Now this is Brazzaville, Brazzaville. Not, the, not the Democratic Republic of Congo, it's right. just Republic of Congo, Brazzaville. Yeah. And this is not just a large plate for this locality, but almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how much dioptase you've seen in your life from a place like Sumeb. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see specimens this big? 
uh, not in the size. I've seen bigger crystals. Right. This looks closer to Renneville. Exactly. Yeah, it's very similar material. It resembles uh, the Renneville more And there's a ton of emerald green dioptase yes. on here. Fairly good sized crystals. They're yeah. sharp. They're lustrous. They've got a little bit of internal gemminess. Yeah. And this locality. Beautiful colors. Yeah. This locality has consistently produced some really nice dioptases over the years. Yes. This is one of the largest pieces that I've seen, yeah. and I'm really hoping to see more out of this locality in yes. years to come because this is approaching Sumeb quality. If you get a little bit better luster, a little bit more gemminess, I really don't see much of a difference between this and Sumeb. Brian? Good Dave, job. as That's always, good. thanks. It's yeah. great to see Keep you. I love doing yeah. this with you. It's yeah. such a fun time. Yeah. We're going to talk to Brett because we're, Brett is yeah. doing so well with the, with the cut stone business now. Really proud of him. I notice a few of these cuts that I, I feel are quite unusual. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Dave. Brett, how you doing? I'm doing I, well. I see you quietly <laughs> picking these stones up, yep. and you're getting my curiosity. So anyway, what do we have here? You've got some beautiful look cut stones that you've done here. I've got a few things to show you, Dave, and just a couple things to tell you about them. Okay. I have a ametrine from okay. Bolivia here. This material has become very hard to find. The mine is closed oh, down. Okay. There's there's Finally no more production. Out. Yeah. Yep. And the technology of faceting has increased and you can get better polishes, better sharper facets and now mm. they've moved even into carving the bottom of the stone like this oh, one is okay. with these little bubbles they're they're actually half spheres okay. carved into the back of the material oh, yeah. and it's just it's a shame because all this fantastic material comes out over the years and then it stops and faceting technology gets better and better and if we were able to do the cuts now on that material back then, you would see so many fantastic gems. Right. My brother had mentioned this material specifically yes. and to really demonstrate the fact that it is facet grade material, we sure have a gemstone is. that uh, my wife had actually faceted here. My wife has more than 50% of the faceting in this case. Fantastic. And I set her materials and I do all sorts of jewelry work as well. Very good. So yeah, we've we've got one two punch going on. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Keep up the good work. Thank you very yeah, much, very Dave. I appreciate it. it. That's great. Hey, Will. How you doing? Nice, it's very nice to see you. Yeah. Very wonderful show yeah, so far. Wonderful show. Everything's been great so yeah. far. One thing that catches my eye is that uh, Azure, I know it wasn't uh, uh, from uh, uh, Sonora, Mexico, it's so it's a from... Uh, Morenci Mine. The Morenci Mine. By, uh, oh, okay. Wayne Thompson, and it's the largest one uh, he ever found. Very fine. And uh, the reason why I see it, not only th th this is hard to get now from Morenci, but uh, the other reason I want uh, to lead up to the ones that are coming out of the Sonora mine, because uh, the Azurites now coming out of there are just uh, totally unbelievable. But this is a very, very extraordinary specimen from Morenci. Very nice one oh, from yeah. Burma. From Burma. Look from at this. Sakanji mine. Yeah. Very nice. To get these on Matrix, I always like to show a Matrix Topaz because it's very hard to get them on Matrix compared to having them loose. Yeah, beautiful. And getting anything out of Burma is not exactly easy. Yep. Your father has very well uh, established connections and you can see why he gets killer things out of there. Peace this here. is La Calada, Spain. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful piece. Oh, Deep color. They're all complete with those. Modified cubes. Yeah, that's a beautiful specimen. And I understand you have some goodies to show us. Yes, I do. We have some fun, fun things hidden As in I the say, back. Here's a very fine epidote from uh, his ex Gene Myron collection. It was part of his epidote suite very when he was good. collecting epidotes. And boy, these from is this, this is uh, Pakistan? Actually. It is Pakistan. I'm seeing the translucency. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's a deep, fantastic deep red one. and green. Actually, oh yeah, you that's get a, light a superb it. thing. I love this. And and, and you know it's so interesting. They're very much like Uner Sasbach, though, but immediately you can tell the difference because of the translucency. Yep. And here's a very cute closed Gwindle that was in the Eric Asselborn collection. Oh, isn't that a cute thing? A miniature small one like that. That's fine. Right. Boy, what a twist of that. That's, I love that. Great isn't twist Isn't that a on wild it. thing? And it's uh, the lighter color. Which yeah. One. And we see a lot of these from Madagascar, Celestites, oh, but yeah. that's a very, very nice one. Sure I is. Just pick this up at the show. I'll take it home and trim it a bit. Yes. Yeah, but I'm, it's very nice to get these. That's right. They're all terminated. You got it. And I'll probably remove a little of the back. Yeah, but, you can uh, tune it up a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. Certainly is. 
It's an Alexandrite from Russia. Oh, very, very good. They're so hard to get. Sixling twin. This is a hell of a good one because most of these are kind of crude, but this is this really sharp, sharp. And I really bet it has a wonderful color change, yeah, too. It has a good color yeah. change. Yeah, yeah you're seeing a real rarity here because these Russian ones, they're big, but they're very crude. This is a beautiful sixling and uh, uh, Russian. That's the ultimate Alexandrite in the world coming out of Russia. And then as we know, Miralani has been producing a lot of Tanzanites, but yes. here's a fantastic one on Matrix. Sure is. Isn't that a beautiful piece? Isn't it unbelievable, the stuff coming out? It's pretty yeah, amazing. It is. Yeah, it's a beautiful Matrix piece. Oh, isn't that neat? Isn't that the cutest thing? Feldspar. Feldspar with the smoky. Smoky cords. Boy, that is really a classic from, specimen. He, yeah, it's from Japan. From Japan. A, oh, very rare. It's one of the to best. To get I've anything seen. from Japan is very difficult to get. What a classy mineral. Yep. So, Dave, I have one more thing to show you. Brand new from the ground. It's uh, from the Palachief mine. Or really? Well, I understand they they either got into the Palachief or something under it. That, no, they, they've reopened the Palachief oh, mine, good. Jeffrey's Winger, from the Ocean View mine, and good. he's uh, producing there okay. now. Okay. So, why don't I take you over here yeah. and we'll take a look? So, this was uh, found in the Palachief mine, which yeah. was just purchased by Jeffrey's Winger okay. from Bob Dawson. Oh, and, okay. Uh, Bob was in there working, but just hand tools and whatnot, and really not doing it, uh, you know, professionally. And and Jeffrey has gone in there and yeah. really uh, moved some rock. And uh, they turned the corner and they found a pocket. And then the bottom oh. of that was uh, this piece here. Well, great. So pretty Fantastic. amazing. Fantastic. Oh yeah, that's an extraordinary thing. I can barely hold it. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's pretty heavy. Oh yeah, it's uh, four, forty pounds or thirty pounds. Some looks like. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. All right, very Dave, good. that's about all. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Every it's year, a it's always a pleasure always to get together with you guys, yep. and you always have wonderful things well, to show us. Hopefully we can uh, have a, uh, many more to show you in the future. Very good, Will. Appreciate thank you, it. Thanks a lot. See ya. Yeah. Evan, how Hi, you Dave. doing? Good. Congratulations. You have your own room here now at the Western Look here. Yes. This is uh, the first time you've been as a dealer in the room. So yeah. last time we filmed you, we were shooting your beautiful edge right outside. Yeah, That's good. Uh, uh, Dave opened up a couple of rooms here at the Westward Look and uh, brought in a couple of new dealers. Yes. So we're one of the new dealers. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. You deserve it because you've worked hard and you come up with some real killer stuff. Well, thank you. Let's just start with a common mineral, but this is not common. It's this topaz crystal. It's absolutely colorless with a slight milkiness to it. And just the general form, etching, it almost looks like it's been all polished. Is, has that been polished, do you think? That the, has not been polished. Yeah, see, it's hard to believe. I didn't think it would be. And then all this here, this stepped up, very, very unusual topaz. I've never seen anything like that in absolutely colorless with all that different uh, etching and smoothness. Yeah, that is really a wild thing. I like that. It just caught my eye. So this is a native lead specimen, and it's replacing uh, a tree limb. Now, when oh, I lift okay. this up, you can see. Oh yes! Oh, okay. That's a piece of the carbonized tree limb. Okay. Uh, and this, this is from Longbon, Sweden, which of wow. course is the world's uh, premier location for native lead. That is correct. Wow. Very interesting. Uh, uh, piece and it's I don't know technically I suppose it's a fossil. Interesting. Uh, you know, it's a limb cast. Now this there, is, that's definitely a hard thing to get. Yeah, that's from Holy the. Holy cow! That's from I'm the. Glad main, you pointed that yeah, out. Isn't that this great? is a hell of a bornite. Yeah, that's from wow. the Mangula mine uh, in Zimbabwe, okay. formerly Rhodesia, and. Uh, Oh, some of the world's wanted one of these. Yeah. I came up with a thing about this big, like that, and this thing is large, beautiful iridescence on it. Yeah, this was collected. That's a in rare the, specimen. Collected in the late 1950s. Okay. This okay. is a very nice, oh, wonderful brochure type. Emerald green crystals. 
They're actually oh, uh, that's fantastic. They're actually sturdier than they look. There are two two basic types. Yeah, of that, that, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, that's what I'm used to. Is yeah. that type? Yeah. Now these are quite fragile. Yes, they are. Um, yeah. These these They're hold up stout. Yeah. Hold up uh, a little better. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. This is a quite a nice piece here. Let's take a look at this one. Look at that color. Oh. You can see the metallic uh, uh, yes. electric blue reflections Absolutely. Uh, coming back at you. That's, there's a thin layer of azurite covering uh, yes. what's actually malachite pseudomorphs. Exactly. Beautiful. Yeah, it's very yeah this ended up being one hell of an azurite discovery. Yeah. Ah, it's incredible. This one's pretty nice, too. Yeah. Look at the size yeah, of these crystals. That. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that shade of blue when you move that in. I don't know if you can pick that up, that color. Yeah, look at that. Boy, that is really something. Look at that thing. <laughs> but look, perfect. Great luster. Oh, nice color. Absolutely good beautiful. No, they really are something else. Holy cow. Yeah, this color uh, equals the finest oh, color from Bisbee. Yeah, absolutely. Possibly exceeds it. Yeah, I actually saw one. I just never seen it. It looked like linerite. Yeah, looked just like a linerite. Some killer people, linerite. Some people call it linerite blue. Yeah, linerite really. Linerite blue yeah. azurites. Well, they're dead on with that. Dave, I've got a special piece to show you. Oh, okay. Yo, you guys all have special pieces. Did yeah. you look at the face on him? The big smile. Here, open face. that box. Oh, this is beautiful. It's a spray. On the matrix. Yeah. Take this out. Yeah, this carefully. is from the Milpius mine. It sure is. A large All crystal into the malachite from the azurite. Look at this. Oh yeah, that's extremely beautiful. And it's that chatoin. That's another thing I like about it. It's that chatoin type of malachite. Look at that. Well, Dave, on behalf on behalf of my new company, Unique Minerals, uh, thank you. That's good. That's your new company name now. Unique Minerals, and uh, my partner Mark Miderman couldn't be here today, but. Okay. He sends his wishes. Good. Well, that's that's great. Congratulations. Okay. Thanks, Keep up Dave. the good work. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Rudolph, how are you doing today? Hello, Dave. Fine, thanks. Great and to see you. To see you. Anton, how are, how are you? you doing? I'm fine, thank you. We are very happy and proud to be in here for the first time at the Tucson show in the Westwood Look right. Resort. Yeah. yeah, so we are happy to present our fine minerals here. Good you for know, you. We are uh, frequent dealers at Munich show and San Marie yes. show, and so we are here as well, and we're happy to show them to you. Well, that's it is good. really great to stay here. Yeah, that's great. This specimen actually came out in 1982. Okay. Yeah, yeah close to Hotter Cell. Um, it has the particular, it's particularly fine because it has two different uh, styles. Yes. See, you have the typical horse apple style mm -hmm. and there's calendohedrons in between. Very actually, good. Actually, this is what's unique to this pocket, and I've yes. seen nothing mm -hmm. To yeah, compare with, with the this. red color in combination yeah. with the size of the piece, really okay. special. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's it's one of the very, best we ever had. Very very fine thing. piece. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. This aqua's catching yeah, my eye right Yeah, this aquamarine is also an absolutely gorgeous specimen. Yeah. It's a yeah. thick mass of many crystals that's right. Right. together. That's why it caught my eye. Several crystals. It's like a parallel. city. <laughs> yeah, it's like a city. Yeah. <laughs> like some towers grown and it's together. Yeah. Well crystallized on all sides. Yes. See the fine shoal crystals here on the back. Uh huh. Yeah. One more funny thing about this piece, there's one water bubble inside here. Oh, well, okay. Let me That's show you. like an elevator. How it, how it rises. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Well, I turn it around. This yeah, is really, it's really unique to an aquamarine. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. These Gwendo smoky yeah. quartz from the Alps, Switzerland, what have you, are so beautiful. Yeah, this Gwendo comes from the Gallenstock. You know, this okay. is close to Furka Pass okay. in Canton Uri, Switzerland. 
uh, these are very rare in oh, this yeah. size, very I tell you. So. See the quality, the transparency, yeah. the yeah. luster on this, the perfection, how it forms. That's right. You it's don't have all this cloudiness uh, inside. Yeah. Uh, it's it's so really gem. And, 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 yeah. and, and a little touch of red in the, in the yeah. color. Yeah, yeah. The color is wonderful. You can, you can yeah. just find this in, in, in Swiss pieces. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, Not yeah. from, from Ural uh, or Brazil. Uh, yeah. Other, Localities. Beautiful, Gwendo. Yeah. And the special thing is, yeah, they're so uh, special. You have really to shoot it. The fluorides yeah. top are, are yeah. not repaired. You know, very good. The fluoride is a soft mineral, and yes. when it comes to the surface, they mm -hmm. most and mostly uh, fall off the quartz. Yes. And here you have a full group of fluorides on the tip yeah. of a clear quartz crystal. Yeah. In perfect condition. Beautiful. Yeah. Still pristine. Yeah. Her no mother damage. nature formed it, so it's. Yeah. Really a marvelous thing. That's beautiful. It's really rare. Now, you said you have a special goal to show us. Yes, we have set right. aside one special piece to show you. This is a gold uh, that came out some years ago of Brazil. Okay. You know, there are not many uh, good gold crystals from Brazil. This comes Ooh. from Alta Floresta. Mato Grosso region from Brazil. From Brazil. From Brazil. Yeah. Now that it's is like, really uh, choice because yeah. it's crystallized and you know, it, I have to be honest with you, I'm just familiar with some nuggets once in a while, but to yeah. get a good crystallized specimen like yeah. that, and this is and heavy, this is 95% yeah. uh, gold. Yeah, at a little least, bit of yeah. quartz yeah. Uh, attached to it. Yeah. Beautiful and specimen. It's over Perfect five centimeters in size and see yeah. the fine oh, dodecahedron yeah, crystals here That's on right. top at least you know, no. six or seven, uh, seven millimeters wide, so it's yeah. really gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay. Well, that's great. So I'm happy you like our pieces. Well, thank that you. Much, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Keep up You're the welcome. good work and welcome, welcome to yeah. Arizona. And it's nice to have you aboard for what's hot in Tucson. Yeah. Ron, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. That's great. We're here with Ron Gladnick. Uh, in the, is this a library? This is a nice room we're in at the Westward Look uh, it's very Hotel. Nice and it's a very comfortable, quiet room where we can discuss your wonderful exhibit in the main entrance of this uh, hotel. Every year, uh, our show that they have here, the Westward Look show, uh, they have one person that puts and contributes showing their mineral collection. You happen to be doing the one for the 2012 uh, year. And uh, that's quite an honor, number one. Number two, very selective who they choose. There's many collectors all over the world, needless to say. Many uh, uh, important collectors are at the show. And you were invited because you have a very superb collection of minerals. Oh, thank you. Here, I understand you are a new collector, relatively new. It, uh, I, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, what got you interested? And when did you start? And what, what have you? So let me ask you this question. How long have you been collecting minerals themselves, just the minerals? About three and a half years. So what got you started uh, to be interested in the minerals themselves? Um, for the last 12 years, I was a gemstone collector. Oh, okay. And um, really uh, focused on colored gemstones and built a um, collection of uh, mandarin garnets and spinels and opals and sapphires and, you know, paraiba tourmalines. And um, I had met Bill Larson through my collecting and I um, had bought three or four stones from him for my collection. And one day he said, why don't you come up to the house? There's something I'd like to show you. Okay. And uh, he introduced me to his whole mineral collection and he was very generous and took me into his private vault and showed me you know, some of the most beautiful things that I'd ever seen in my whole life. Exactly. And I can honestly tell you from that day forward, I never bought another gemstone. Okay. And okay. Uh, became completely enthralled uh, with learning about minerals uh, trying to find beautiful minerals and build a collection and it's become a real passion mm -hmm. and what I like about it is no matter how much you read no matter how many collections you go and look at no matter how much you learn there's always something new it's and, endless and there's there's never you can never beat it wow. you know so I look at it as a relatively young man it's something I can do for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and never conquer it and I've had great mentors. You know, there's been people, both collectors and dealers, who've been very generous with me. Yes. Um, 
you know, I feel fortunate that Bill's mentored me the way he has. Right, yeah. And um, but having said that, you know, he's told me to buy things from many different people. Yes. And uh, you know, I, I've met some fascinating, incredibly intelligent human beings, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something I intend to do for the rest of my life. Well, good for you. The one thing I've gravitated towards. Um, I really, really try to find matrix specimens. Very good. Um, because it's, you know, I think it's hard to find perfect specimens, and then it's that much harder to find them on matrix. That's very true. So um, I've I've really gravitated towards that type of collecting. Having said that, I see things all the time mm -hmm. that are beautiful, and I end up breaking my own rule and buying something that's not <laughs> on matrix. So I guess at this point, I'm relatively undisciplined. <laughs> the other thing I really enjoy is I found beautiful things that might have been not very expensive, but they're still beautiful oh, and absolutely. incredibly unique. Well, sure, yeah, yeah. And then there are things that obviously are more of a significant investment, and mm -hmm. they're beautiful as well, but I, I think there's something for everyone. Oh, you know? very much so. And, yeah, um, that's a good thing about the hobby. And I think when you collect things that you love, you know, whether you paid $10 or $100,000 or $500,000, so doesn't matter. That's absolutely you love true. It. You love them. And I've also, um, I've enjoyed reading about mines, learning about mm -hmm. mines. So, you know, my daughters and my stepson, they you know, they, they learn about the minerals, they've learned geography, they've learned, mm -hmm. you know, how things come out of the earth. You know, there's just so many components to the hobby where you can learn so many different things. Very much so. Had, have you had the opportunity to get into an actual producing type mine where you were able to dig out whatever mineral they're digging for? Yeah, I was, um, I've been very fortunate. Um, I visited several mines. Um, and a local mine in San Diego, uh, mm -hmm. we were invited, and my 12-year-old uh, daughter uh, mined a 2.2 kilogram kunzite wow. out of a pocket. Good. And, well, that's uh, exciting. We have yeah. lots of pictures and yeah, memories from good. that day. Yeah. And uh, you know, we've actually uh, a group of us uh, collectors um, and dealers uh, have purchased two tourmaline mines in San Diego. Okay. The Esmeralda and the Ware mine, and okay. we're gonna. Actually, in a couple of weeks, we'll be mining well, the Esmeralda. You. So oh, you're really getting involved. Yeah, I, you know, when you talk about the value of minerals, I, I have a little different perspective. Obviously, like any uh, investor, consumer, um, you want to buy things as well as you possibly can. But I also believe that we're collecting the most undervalued form of art Very that I've ever so. seen. Yeah, it is And um, I believe at some point in time, the larger population of capable people will recognize our our hobby for an incredible asset value art form. Yeah. And I think when that happens, who knows what's yeah. going to happen. And it's starting to happen now because the computerized world, we're reaching out and touching people all over the world. Yep. It's getting harder and harder to get great things. Yeah. And so when you have an opportunity to get something that you know, you can look at it aesthetically and know it's going to be special. Mm -hmm. That's probably a pretty good indication you should do that. That's right. And uh, you know, I've tried to take that lesson to heart because I'm looking for a good dioptase and I still can't find one. Yeah, you will because there are some new ones coming out. Yep. So I've there's a new them. pocket coming out, and uh, you'll be able to get one, perhaps. Yep. Uh, but uh, you have to act fast because there's everybody else wants to get them too. Yep. What you've done so far is extraordinary. You, your taste is wonderful. Uh, you've taken proper advice. You're doing very, very well. I'm not saying that just to flattery. It just shows in the collection you brought to this show. Well, thank you very much. I really have yeah. appreciated it. And, you know, I just want to say for anyone who's thinking of doing this, um, everyone was incredibly gracious. The dealers, the collectors, mm -hmm. people. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I was a little good. nervous this morning. Oh, yeah. But okay. by... An hour into it, I was having a great time, and I've had a great time all day. That's right. And you took a big jump to be able to come this far in that short a period of time. Yeah. Well, we're you're, working you're, hard at it. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Keep up the good work. I'll try. Thank yep. you. Dominic, how are you doing? Good. How are La you? Last time we got together was on the uh, uh, Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the Convention Center. That's right. You have a magnificent setup of, of, of uh, crystal specimens 
out here as a special exhibit in conjunction with the gentleman, yeah, um, Ron, Ron yeah. uh, has these beautiful minerals and yeah. then you have these wonderful paintings. Yeah, right his side. collection is just phenomenal, so it was a great uh, opportunity for me to illustrate them and in fact he, he's, uh, I think I have illustrated all but nine pieces for Very him. good, yeah. that's and great. And new pieces will be illustrated though. People like Ron and, of course, Bill Larson and Rob Levinsky and Danny and people like that has really encouraged me to do right. this work. And I'm very uh, privileged to have friends like that who right. supported me and, uh, and to also get fantastic specimens to work with. My dad was a gemologist. He was the first American qualified gemologist wow. from GIA for okay. the entire Asian countries. Fantastic. And he was in the first class. So to me, I feel like I'm walking in my father's footsteps yes. and I'm honoring, also honoring my father by doing this. I said, Dad, what do you expect me to do when I grow up? And he, when I was about four years old, he said, keep my flag flying. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. So as I grew up, he said, don't become an artist because you'll never make a living. And it was funny, <laughs> but uh, just before he passed away, I had my first exhibition oh. of wildlife art. Oh. And he came to the exhibition and I sold out in less than an hour. Wow. And he said, son, you have stood on your own feet. Yeah. I was wrong, and I'm, I'm glad to see that. And yes. three months later, my father passed away. Oh, so at so least I was something. grateful that I was able to honor him. And yes. uh, I still keep honoring him with all the mineral work. Every sure. day I paint, I think about him. That's fine, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. wonderful. You're a rare breed. There's not too many people <laughs> can do that. Now you can count them on your hands. <laughs> Thank you. You keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Minerals booth, and you have a beautiful uh, booth set up. You, you had one last year, but this year you went all out. You've got a lot of beautiful cases of minerals here. I'd love to film them all. Needless to say, we can't. There's just so many minerals, but you really did a superb job of setting up this booth. I'm really Thank impressed. Uh, one thing, window that caught my eye, I thought it was an epidote, <laughs> but it is. It's an Adrian. But what I like about the way that one, Chris, is shooting off to the left. So this is an Adrian mineral, and uh, what is the locality? I forgot. The Mount Mal Malosa in um, Samba Plateau, Malawi. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And um, this stuff we um, acquired together with Collector's Edge at the Baman Collection. Oh, yes. okay. And this was one of um, my favorite specimens um, because this group of um, elongated adrians is very, for my opinion, very uh, impressive, yes, high it lustrous. Is. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Lovely specimen. The way this jets out right from the matrix, like I yep. said a minute yep. ago. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Very good. This Ahoites catch in the eye, and we're starting to see a few of these in town, so they must have hit a very fine pocket. And uh, uh, we should really appreciate these now because uh, it really is a, a unique form of this quartz having aho uh, yes. inclusions in the piece. Can you take that yes, guy out? Because it's a beautiful crystal for several May reasons. I remove it or? Yeah, I'll just hold it. For okay. You. But what's really fine about this thing is that this has not been cut or polished. Yes. It's all natural. Because a lot of them, they have to in order to show the aho But yep. when you get them where they're not cut and polished, they, they really are beautiful specimens. And yes. how you can tell, and this is for the general public, I don't know, Brian, if you can get the reflection off the crystal faces, mm -hmm. you'll see the formation of the natural crystal not polished down. Yep. You can not polish these and replicate the natural form of the crystal itself. Yes, you can readily right. tell that. And a lot of people don't know that. They just think if they polish it off, it looks like the regular crystal was so what. But no, there is a difference. But this is, happens to be a very lovely natural one that, that's been cleaned up a little bit. They might have scraped off a little bit to clean it up, but they didn't do yes. any repolishing and so, no cutting yeah. to the piece. You're definitely right. Yeah. 
beautiful piece. Thank you. It is quite new in my stock because um, I have uh, purchased a collection four weeks before. Oh, okay. And this was one of the only specimens I brought to Tucson because it was very clean and so it was very easy Beautiful. to bring it to yes to that's US. a lovely yes. thing i like the violet color the, oh yeah that yes. makes yes. it so beautiful what's nice about this it actually has a more of a violet than the pinkish color that yes. i've seen in other calcites so it's a little different in that effect and the fact that it's uh, in beautiful condition and uh, really aesthetically yeah. arranged yeah. yeah it is a lovely uh, form to it and especially the size of the crystals oh very much yes, so yes. yeah from a distance I thought it was a stacked up uh, fluorite and then I realized no that is a calcite yes I'm glad you mentioned that because from a distance it kind of looks like the you know I've seen fluorites yep. like this yes. and the, it's the purpley the violet yeah see if it was pink you'd know immediately it was uh, the calcite and not the fluorite in this type of shape no that's a beautiful specimen I can there. show you a special specimen um, oh. I didn't show it here. And, uh, oh, you're going to so surprise us. It might be interesting for you. Lindo has a surprise for us. So <laughs> okay. should I follow you? Please yeah. follow me. Okay. Wow. Here the, you see oh, uh, well, they, a nice thick silver very fine. from Himmel's first mine in Saxony. Very good. That's a beautiful piece. Wow. It's very unusual that um, this massive, thick, yeah, this massive thick ropes rise. coming into into the uh, yes. matrix, which is silver in itself. Yes. And the striation is very, Beautiful. very, very beautiful. aesthetic. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a real eye stopper. Well, I'll tell you, silver. With so many collectors around the world, is like their favorite. Silver yes. is very yes. popular. These wonderful silvers uh, from various locations in the world. This is from Saxony, I believe from you Saxony, said. Yeah. Yes, from Himmel's first mine. Um, everybody called the uh, city Freiburg, but that's not true. Oh. It's Brand Erbisdorf. Oh, okay. It's a city with about 10,000 uh, people, population. Okay. Um, it's close to Freiburg. Everybody yeah. says it's yeah. Freiburg, but yeah, Freiburg. the mine is directly in Brand. Very good. Okay. Beautiful. Hey. Good job. Hey. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank book. you for yeah. coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Steve, how you doing? Steve, you doing? We're nice back at the you. show, and you, what a wonderful booth you got here! But God, you, the sir. size of this booth—it's like a show in itself. But anyway, uh, this catches everybody's eyes, and it really caught my eyes is that you got a couple very unusual pieces in here. Yeah, the, both of these are from the Uli Bauman collection that oh, okay. we, we purchased just before the Denver show last year. Oh, okay. And uh, Uli had some spectacular minerals from Southern Africa. Fantastic. And these are two quartz crystals that have been included by very special copper bearing minerals. Exactly. Yep. Aho white and this one in the back here, double terminated quartz, a group of Druzy quartz on it. And what's nice, these are all natural. These are not all cut yep. down and everything. They're not polished yeah. at all. They're, Wonderful. they're cleaned beautifully yes. in our laboratory at the collector's edge. Yes. And they're, this is, if not the biggest, one of the biggest double terminated crystals from the Musina deposit. Fully it, agree. It, and it's fantastic in that it has the inclusion of ahoite on both ends of the crystal so many times you've just got a single and right. a single crystal with absolute the ahoite at the uh, top termination mm -hmm. and then it gets deposited and ahoite is a very acicular mineral so it could be very fragile if yeah. mother nature didn't allow the quartz crystal to cover it, to up. Cover it up and so <laughs> right. you have this really brilliant turquoise color uh, through the quartz uh, crystal so it's just fantastic and even all the little druzy ones yeah. in the in it's the back have the ahoite included and then what's even more unusual uh, as spectacular as this piece is the papagoite is much Extremely harder to rare. find much rare. And, and so uh, Uli had two of the very finest uh, small cabinet size
bite-sized pieces of the papagoite I've seen. Yes. And this is a su superb example here sure of the, a really intense medium blue color, almost a light azurite blue uh, of the of the papagoite. Again, both are copper minerals, but they're included within, yeah. completely within the quartz. They're the real eye stoppers, and boy, it is catching everybody's eye, believe me. It is, and it, me. it doesn't hurt to have a roto nearby. Oh yeah, it just uh, brings roto. them out. It's a drawing <laughs> card, and you guys are known for the roto chrome sites. <laughs> yes, sir. The collector's edge, yes, it's sir. so funny. Yeah. yeah, beautiful case. Thank you very much. The sulfur caught my eye down here. This is quite This is one of the world's great mineral specimens, Dave. Unbelievable. I have not seen, uh, you I know, you get Fight so big. I know. Perfect. With with amazing crystals, yes. they're gemmy, lustrous, yeah. uh, in superb condition. Absolutely. This is one of the one one of the wonders of the world. I think it's it's a spectacular sulfur specimen, of course, from Sicily in Italy, yes. and uh, just classic old specimen, superbly prepared, yeah. and in great great condition. I mean, there's no uh, nicks or dings on those crystals. They are approximately when was that taken out? Do you know? I, I, almost 100 years ago, I believe. Unbelievable way it survived that long yeah. because sulfur is very delicate. Right. And they break so easy, and here that's in perfect and, condition. And many times these were, were not only is there uh, bitumen or... Uh, uh, petroleum material yes. uh, within the crystals, you yes. can see it, but also often these plates are covered covered completely with the that bitumen, and that protects them quite a bit until that's cleaned away. Oh, so my okay. guess is that, okay. that at some point in the past there was a, a coating of bitumen that, that helped to protect it from damage. That's as fantastic. It was being, being mined. Oh, it was well but what a, yeah. Magnificent specimen. What an amazing mineral yeah. specimen. Uh, Just fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've got another yeah. color specimen that I think you'll really oh. enjoy seeing, Dave. Oh, my goodness. This just came All in. Right. This is a color. huge Spinel Law twin yeah. of, of uh, fluorite. And it's got an incredible, uh, almost a morganite pink. It's got a little bit of orange Intense in, in the pink. pink at that. Yes. I mean, it's like the best of morganite colors. Yes. And you know, f the fluorite from Pakistan generally doesn't get this kind of extreme vivid pink that color. That is correct. And, is and correct. you can see in the transmitted oh, light here how transparent. You can see my fingers behind it. Yeah. And, and a really beautiful little rosette of muscovite, a That's little bit right. of albite with it, yeah. and just a surprise herb mineral specimen. And not that you would cut it, but it has tremendous cutting yeah. potential yeah. in there, but of course you would never cut a I would, major I specimen like that. that. But it's always nice to say it even has, lends itself to be cut exactly. if you want it, but not, most people would never cut that, needless to say. Exactly. But the color is the best I've ever seen yeah. in fluorite this is from, from that locality. Yeah, this is from the Chuma Barkur area in Pakistan. Very good. And uh, uh, one of the finest in, known in the world, especially yeah. for the intensity in yes. color. And this just came in. We we were able to bring this down only for the main show. Okay. So uh, really a spectacular piece, and we've been showing this privately to, to customers. Just yeah. beautiful. Well, Steve, thank you. David. Once again, you guys do a great job. And thank you. It's I always really... a pleasure to come by this booth. Even the flowers are different. Each year, you get these magnificent bouquets of flowers, wonderful minerals, thank wonderful you. cases. It always thank brightens for sure. my day to see you, David, <laughs> and, and it's great to have you on What's Hot in Tucson. Well, thank you very much. Steve. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. Al, how are you? We're great, Dave. It's good so to see you. How are you? Nice seeing you again. A congratulation is in order. You won the Odessa Tells Trophy, I hear, this year. Yes, we're very proud of that. Oh, good for you. And this is your case right here? Yes, it is. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, that's beautiful. <clears throat> oh, you got some beauties in there. I always ask this question, being that I was a collector myself, as you guys know. Yes, we certainly do. Do you have one favorite in the case? Well, I can say that this fluorite from Yao Gang Jian Mine would be one of the last ones that I would part with okay. because the depth of color in Colors it is awesome. Wonderful, beautiful floor. And, and, and for sheer uh, hey, sa insanity, it's fantastic. Uh, we get uh, stupidity points for having transported that stibnite, <laughs> uh, but it's now officially retired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a, that caught my eye. That quartz back there with that's a very unusual specimen. We bought it from the collector when we were living in Vienna several years ago. Okay. Yeah, very unusual piece. Then you got beautiful aquamarine with the muscovite. 
And this is cute. You don't see the rose wrapping around the quartz crystal, only in great big specimens. I've never seen a nice hand-sized small specimen like that. That's very unusual. Yeah, you got the wonderful vanadinite there from Morocco. Yeah, you got a lot of beautiful pieces in here. I didn't enter something in this year. The, the barite that we yes. entered in the Lidstrom competition is from Bob Jackson's spruce claim up in the Snoqualmie, up in the wow. uh, Washington Cascades. Very good, okay. Is this one of the Wisconsin calcocytes? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's beautiful. That was a really a fine, fine, and it just came out slowly and kind of quietly. That, that was a highly important find because getting good calcocyte crystals is very hard to get a hold and of. Now there's no trace of that mine oh, left. Oh, it's I gone. Understand. It's just history is what yeah. I hear. And that means a lot to us because we're from Wisconsin. Oh, you are? Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, you got a beautiful case here. We have felt fortunate to be able to collect, and we do feel uh, sort of a uh, an obligation to show the minerals that we have been able good to for enjoy. You. Good for you. And we will continue to do that. Good for you, because that's so, what I've done for many years myself. I know you have, yeah. and we have learned from that. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Congratulations. Dave. Through the years uh, since, oh gosh, I don't remember, 1970s, yeah, when this uh, magazine, Rock and Gem, started, Jim Miller, the owner, asked me if I would be willing to write for it, so I started. Right. And through the years, I, you know, I've enjoyed it many immensely. Are, so. It's given me many avenues to follow. And uh, about 1993, I guess it was, I began a little series of articles, called, which I call the Frugal Collector, which reflects my philosophy. And I've mentioned it before. If you know your minerals, if you really know your minerals, if you study and read and talk to people, you can eventually assemble a collection that doesn't cost you a small fortune. And I did about 30 or 40 of those articles, and then the idea you know, struck me, and gee, maybe I should put them in the form of a book. So I've just, Rock and Jam has just released a book called The Frugal Collector. And it's just come out at this yeah, show? Yeah, right, and this is volume one. Very good, Volume two okay. will come out when we get to it. Yes. Let's put it that way. Wow. It's got, every page has a picture, Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, each chapter either deals with a mineral like azurite yes. or a group of minerals like the phosphates, the silicates, you know, that kind of thing. Very and, good. And uh, that's actually <laughs> dealer Benny Fenn. And this is the famous Cave of Swords that was oh, found in the 1920s yes. in the Nica mine. Right. And it's still filled with crystals, thousands and thousands and thousands what of crystals. What is it, so hot in there? Well, in what, the happened, you know, what happened here is that, the, you know, of course, the cave filled with water, right. very rich calcium sulfate water, and as the temperature of the water dropped, the crystals formed, and they formed everywhere. Wow. This is also in the Nyka mine at the 2500 level, and this is where the huge 40-foot crystals are wow. of selenite. Oh, okay. And that's my best side. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can get this from uh, Miller Media. You can look it up on the internet. It's uh, here at the show. They're selling it for 42 bucks, which yeah, is a bargain. I do want to get a copy yeah, of yeah. it. The, yeah, uh, I think the retail price is 52.95. I see. But anyway, it's uh, yeah. great photography. Jeff Scoville photography. Uh, uh, Joe Bud from Houston photography. A little bit of my photography. Yeah. And uh, well, that's, that's it. Great. We were talking about the Milpius azurites and how beautiful they are. The variety of crystals is what is amazing. And there's some, uh, been a fairly recent pocket found. And the blocky crystals that are coming out of there are very much like what has come out of Sumeb and Bisbee. And Evan's got a new one here that he'd like to show you. Here's a new piece. Yeah. Now look at look at the blockiness of these these crystals. That's entirely different from some of the azurites that have been coming out earlier. They're more prismatic and longer. And uh, then of course there's the electric blues that we've talked about. But this is a different crystal, excuse me, crystal style altogether. They're quite remarkable. To me, this is very reminiscent of Chessy or of the Czar mine at Bisbee. Of all of the minerals that are here at this Arizona uh, display this year, Bisbee is the feature that stands out above all. It has produced more varieties, well over 300 species. And of course, azurite and malachite are the lead uh, specimens that came out of there. The pieces you see here are from uh, several of the major 
museums and from prominent private collections. Uh, the piece that, one of the pieces that stands out here is this piece in the center, this large uh, uh, azurite. Now this is uh, originally from the collection of Ben Williams, who was the uh, first superintendent of the Copper Queen mine. Uh, this specimen was probably collected in the 1890s. In fact, it was definitely collected in the 1890s. Uh, it's now in the collection of uh, Daniel Trinchillo. Uh, just an amazing piece. Uh, another specimen of note is this malachite pseudomorph just below it. Uh, probably uh, the finest, well, arguably the best specimen from Bisbee uh, for its aesthetics and quality and definitely the finest malachite pseudomorph. Yeah, that's out of the Rice Museum in, in, uh, outside of Port Hillsboro, outside of Portland, Oregon, and it came out of the Esther Mayberry collection. Now another specimen uh, of, these are all wonderful things. Uh, let's focus in on this piece. This is uh, a very, very rare species. Uh, Bisbee's the type locality for paramalacanite, and this is one of the co-type specimens. Uh, this is the largest piece in existence, uh, it's now in the coll collection of the uh, U.S. National Museum uh, in Washington. This conolite here was also collected in the 1890s. That's probably the finest conolite known from Bisbee. Uh, this is in the collection at the Harvard Mineralogical Museum. Another rare species of note is this dark-looking vug of crisp blue crystals in cuprite. That's a spangolite specimen, uh, arguably the finest spangolite uh, or at least one of the top two spangolites known from Bisbee. The malachite, uh, that's out of the Smithsonian. Uh, you know, this is something that, that formed in a cave uh, from very copper carbonate rich waters. Uh, it, it, that's a really unusual very piece, unusual. very fine, uh, probably from the Tsar mine. I have never seen anything like this before. It could be the only one in existence. Now this piece, probably formed on a stem in a pool of water, just like a lily pad. And the water must have been a super saturated in copper carbonate. Yeah, calcite, that, yeah, calcite does that fairly regularly in caves. Yeah, and this is in the collection of James Zegras, a very mm -hmm. fine piece. Very Over here, this copper is very nice. That's, That's probably the finest spinel twin copper from Bisbee. That's that light tight. blue uh, geode looking specimen is a mineral called calcoalumite. It's type uh, locality for Bisbee, isn't it? Bisbee is the type locality yeah. for calcoalumite. Uh, and this is in the collection of Lyda Hill. That's beautiful. That specimen was from the Philadelphia Academy collection. Uh, so it's very old, probably from the 1890s. Uh, probably uh, uh, one of the finest, if not the finest, examples of this mineral. Really? These are malachite crystals. Okay, primary crystals. And only one pocket of, of this material these malachite crystals from the coal mine uh, was found. Now, malachite crystals were found all over the district, but this particular pocket represents the finest, uh, uh, the finest discovery of malachite crystals in Bisbee, and this is an exceptional example. Wonderful. Truly an amazing locality, oh, uh, and, and we're very fortunate that the, uh, the mine management uh, was very supportive of mineral collecting and specimen preservation. Uh, when they were mining, and even back in the 1880s and 1890s, and they hit a large pocket, mining stopped, the pocket was collected, specimens were preserved, and that's why we have so many thousands and thousands of wonderful specimens from Bisbee. This is an example of Dick Graham's collection. Dick was a superintendent at Bisbee for a number of years, and remarkably, when they began to enlarge the lavender pit, they began to run into secondary minerals and he was asked by the company to collect all that so they and they ran into zones of malachite that were just remarkable and you can see some examples of well, there's, that there's one, this one in the corner yes is an example of, of one of those pieces that's is from the Holbrook extension is what they called it what yeah. year, what that 1969 and 1970 yeah. One of the companies in the state now that's the biggest company in the state that took over from Phelps Dodge is the Freeport McMoran. And they've been very generous with their financial support. And of course, they decided to give us a little exhibition of what they have in their collection. <laughs> these are absolutely remarkable. Fabulous. Yeah, these are specimens that were saved by the, uh, uh, 
the original company in the 1890s, yeah, so which was well, which was called the Copper Queen Consolidated Mining Company, uh, which was a subsidiary of Phelps Dodge. One thing you may notice is that many of the azurite specimens uh, from Bisbee are this light royal blue color. Yes. Uh, the reason for that is when azurite uh, has a high proportion of zinc, the color turns this, this wonderful light blue color. But these are specimens, again, that date from the 1890s. Well, uh, this case was uh, put together by Phil Scalisi and Donza Water. Uh, there's a nice cross-section of specimens here from, from the older uh, uh, collecting efforts during mining in the 1880s and 1890s, and more recent specimen recovery efforts. Uh, this single large uh, crystal, it, it, that's from the Ed Over pocket of 1938. Yes. Now these large yeah. clusters, uh, there's two or three in the center there, there's one over here. Uh, these were hit by uh, a group of Arizona uh, specimen uh, miners who'd leased the property, uh, Wayne Thompson, Les Presmick, and, and a few others. And on uh, April Fool's Day of 1996, they hit a, a pocket completely unprecedented. It was about 30 feet long, 40 feet long, completely lined with crystals. Uh, not, no one had ever seen anything like that. Uh, at the Red Cloud before, and completely unlike the Ed Over find of 1938. How interesting. Uh, mimetite, that's the finest example known of stalactitic mimetite. There was one pocket found. One of the great mineral localities of the world, oh, one of the finest wolfenite localities in the world. Uh, Everybody wants a yeah. red cloud wolfenite yeah. in their collection. Be because of the recent circumstances in mining, after they got through, they opened pitted. That's how they found that big pocket. Oh, okay. But once they were finished and had to shut down, they had to fill in where they had mined. So the chances of something like this ever being found Slim again, really tough. Ev, you were the co-manager of this case. Who are you working with on this? Uh, Les Presmick. Okay. Both of you have excellent tiger collections, so I suspect you've got a few things in here. Tiger, of course, is world famous, not only for its specimens, but for its rare specimens. It's, it's put out, you know, marvelous species of lead hillite and caledonite, things like that. Well, uh, this case shows uh, examples of specimens from the Mammoth St. Anthony mine, uh, which shut down in 1953. Almost everything you see here, uh, with, with the, the exception of a couple of the Wolfenites, uh, was collected between the 1920s and the 19, early 1950s. That's when all of the great rare minerals were being uh, recovered at the uh, Mammoth St. Anthony mine. Yeah, the company actually had a specimen collector on staff, and he would go in and, and collect. So uh, it was very, very fortuitous for the collectors of today. Now let's point out one of the oldest specimens in here. Uh, this smoky colored orange wolfenite, this is from what's called the Schultz Cut, which was the very first uh, uh, open cut that they were mining uh, at Tiger, it wasn't called Tiger at that time, it was called Schultz, and they were mining for gold. So this was right, right, uh, this was found near the surface in the 1890s, so that's probably the oldest piece in here. Wow. Yeah, Schultz was the prospector who laid claim to the, to the site, okay. and uh, it, originally the town was called Schultz, but uh, when it came time for a U.S. post office to be put in, the, the government wanted a name for the town, and they, they had a vote. Well, the, the rumor, the story is that one of the owners of the mine or some official carried his gold around in a leather pouch that was made from the scrotum of a tiger. And uh, the folks there had their typical desert humor, of course. So they said, oh, well, let's call it Tiger. And hence the name Tiger, Tiger Arizona. Name. Would you believe that? <laughs> That's neat. Well, Arizona, of course, is known as the Copper State, but it started out as the Gold and Silver State, if you will. Yeah, what um, happened is that the people went to California in the 49er rush, right. but when they struck out, when they didn't find anything, then they began coming east. So the west of the United States was really settled from west to east, not east to west. And those guys fanned out through the Rocky Mountains all the way down here in Arizona, and that's why there were so many 
many silver and gold finds in the Rockies because right. of the Argonauts who came from the West. Right, right. And, and in the 1870s, uh, copper really wasn't worth much. Nobody really right. wanted it for, yeah. you know, the, the electric age hadn't begun. Uh, so precious metals were where it was at. And here in this case, you see a, just a fantastic assemblage of crystallized silver and gold from Arizona. Uh, many of these pieces date from the 1880s, 1890s, uh, and some as recent as uh, after the year 2000. So, uh, you know, with metal detecting in the fore now, some pieces are now being found with metal detectors. And uh, you know pieces that are float somewhere, not not associated with a mine property. Now here's a grouping of specimens from Graterville. Notice these uh, beautiful filigree uh, gold specimens. These were found in the 1950s. Uh, this other specimen behind the filigree, and there's a mass of crystallized gold on white quartz that was found in the same district with a metal detector around 2000. Uh, Five, I Would believe. You believe yeah. that? So uh, probably how far the is that from here. Did you oh, say? south of here. South, south of here, maybe forty miles. Fantastic. Um, so these are the, some of the finest crystallized golds from Arizona. And, now, were you also case manager for the Marinci copper mine? No, this no. One? The case managers for the Marinci uh, exhibit were uh, Mike Jaworski, who's the uh, uh, he he works in Bisbee. Uh, chief geologist uh, for Freeport Macmoran, and Stan Esbenshade, who collected many of these specimens. Uh, yeah. the, the other mine besides uh, the, the Bisbee district that produced so many great copper minerals, especially copper carbonates, is Morenci. And here you see some of the finest examples in existence that were produced from the Morenci mine in, in the district. Yeah, as you can see by the state map, and on the back wall, the little dark area is where the uh, mines were. That's in the very extreme eastern part of the state. Yeah. And, and it was very, very uh, rich in carbonate minerals. That was the beauty of it. And luckily, the owners of the mine in recent years, recent decades really, uh, have allowed people to uh, sign collecting contracts and then mineral collectors can get in who knew how to collect and knew how to preserve and they were able to go in there and collect um, right. any, anything that was exposed by mining. It was a yeah. wonderful opportunity to get good stuff like the, stalatic, the stalactitic uh, azurites there. That's marvelous stuff. Well one of the yeah one of the main differences between this case and the cases of Bisbee minerals we just looked at is uh, half or more of these specimens were collected uh, post-1980. Yeah, contract uh, mining. Contract yeah. specimen yeah. recovery yeah. efforts. Uh, whereas in the Bisbee cases, many of those pieces uh, go b way back to the 1880s. Now there are pieces in here that are very old uh, that also date from the 1880s. Uh, one example is this uh, fibrous cuprite in the center known as calcotrichite. Right. That's, that's an old, an old timer. That's a very that's an old timer. Yeah. Fantastic. One of the finest, if not the finest, stalactite yeah. from that pocket. And yeah. most people consider that to be the best piece. Oh, yeah, that's gotta be a two generation piece. That is yeah. absolutely it's wonderful. Marvelous. One of the things that collectors did in the state, uh, Evan and myself and a whole and a lot of guys, we contributed to the writing of a book, which was headed up by uh, Tony Potacek and it's published by Lithiography, and you can buy the book here at the show. It's called okay. Collecting Arizona. Okay. And I'm sure if you went on the internet after the show, you'd be able to find it. Lithiography, LLC. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Lithography. And lithography. when did that okay. book come out? Right now. Oh, it was, right it now? was released at the show. Oh, yeah. can't believe yeah. that. Okay. And uh, if you're really curious, there's a picture of me in the ray pit holding a big sheet of copper. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We're here on the floor of the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the Convention Center. And this is one wonderful show that's taking place, and we're making some uh, pictures, films of some of the uh, guests here. And we have two children here that are actually working in their booth, and it's really cute because uh, we have Kylie here. Hi, Kylie. Hi. And we have Max. How you doing, Max? And what they're doing is actually making jewelry at such a young age it's really incredible so is it true that uh you f got these quartzes and then uh, who did the wrapping of this um 
Um, we both did the rapping, okay. but my dad's friend, when he first heard that we were doing rapping, uh -huh. he gave us these little springs, and all you really okay. have to do is just pull it out. You pull it, you slide it in. Very good. And are they selling well? Oh, uh, yes. That's the hit. Uh huh. Yeah, we've sold mostly shark teeth out of these. Though. Okay. If you buy um, a shark tooth, uh -huh. you would just add. One dollar to the price, and oh. we would wire wrap it or, here, and you could. He's got that all figured out. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you bought one at a different stand, uh -huh. you could wire wrap that. And some of them they were really small, uh -huh. so we decided, oh, let's be nice and and do it for fifty cents well, instead very of a good. dollar. That's great. Nice meeting you, and you guys keep up the good work. You're doing a superb job here. Thank you. Madison, how are you today? Good. Good. And then you're here, in, and this is Daniel. And how yeah. are you today? Good. Good. And you're sitting here, and you're offering minerals for sale. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, tell us about it. What, what are these laying Well, here? this is brookite. Okay. This is aquamarine. And okay. this is um, pyrite on Soapstone, and okay. this is wolfenite. Uh-huh. Very and good. And what did these the aquamarines? aquamarine goes in order of heights. Uh-huh. And it depends on how tall. Yeah. So how much do you think that would be? That is 80. 80? $80. That's, yeah, that's 80 a beautiful crystal. Is this your first year you've been selling here? Yeah. Good. Well, you're doing you know very you're well. You know why you're playing with the rocks? Yeah. Well, that is really They're cute. They're delicate. <laughs> the, bigger the, uh, um, the bigger the aquamarine, the more it costs. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And I want to congratulate you. You're doing a fine job. You keep up the good work, okay? Thank you. Good, good kids. <laughs> I was by this case a, a little while ago, and boy, did I make a discovery in this case. Look at the size of this nugget here, and you think it was from California or Australia until you start looking at this exhibit, and what we have here is an extraordinary nugget from Arizona. I can't believe the size of this, and uh, somebody told me that uh, this thing was found in 1989, then it was brought up to Montana, it sat up in Montana for all these years, and a gentleman uh, uh, brought it down here to show, but uh, what's so outstanding about this nugget, not only the size, but it's the largest nugget ever taken out of Arizona uh, with a metal locator. So wh what, a, what a surprise to find a nugget like this. I had an Arizona nugget myself it weighed seven ounces. This weighs 70 and a half ounces. And it is one hell of a nugget, and I hope everybody appreciates a specimen of this quality. It's a highly important specimen. Now, right next to the gold specimen, now we come to the next door case here, and what do I see? An unbelievable azurite of all places from Bisbee. And here, the piece belonged to Andrew Carnegie. Now, you would think immediately that it would be in the Carnegie collection, but no, it was in his private collection for generations. I believe somebody said three generations. And it, uh, uh, it ended up getting into the hands of a mineral dealer, and this piece is uh, uh, ex extremely high quality. I mean, I can't remember seeing such an exotic shape of an azurite from Bisbee. So I would consider this a, a, a discovery. And here of all people, Andrew Carnegie owning it, but it never ended up going into the Carnegie collection. It was in his own private collection. So here we have it today. One of a kind type of specimen, absolutely beautiful. Major, major thing to have at the show. Gene Myron's case here, and uh, he's bringing minerals every year for many years to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Uh, he has a couple new pieces I don't recognize. Uh, just going to name, uh, starting with the that very unusual shade of blue in the back row center absolutely a wild color for aquamarine. It's an intense sapphire type blue rather than aquamarine blue. And then I was told that the two parts fit together, they slide together. Very unusual habit way that thing formed. That just slips away from the other piece. Another specimen that's so fine is this native silver with uh, copper. They call these half breed, but what's so fine about it is razor sharp silver crystals, and then the native copper is kind of the base or the matrix of the silver. And that's an extraordinary example of that mineral. 
It's got a lovely Burmese uh, uh, ruby there. Very hard to get Burmese rubies on calcite matrix, let alone get a Burmese ruby specimen. But to have one on matrix like that, that's, that's absolutely superb there. Now another one that's catching my eyes is morganite. That is so transparent. The inclusion in there is most unusual. Usually inclusions sometimes interfere with the specimen, but that's almost like a, a picture. And it's a beautifully formed hexagonal flat basal termination, and uh, it, it's just a beautiful uh, uh, morganite from uh, Brazil. Some fine morganites have been coming out of the ground the last few years. It's really a pleasure to see them. Always like to see these topazes from Catlin, uh, uh, Pakistan, Mar Dan region. That's a superb single water clear gem crystal. Very rare, they're very hard to get a hold of, and you very rarely see them that gemmy with that wonderful color. So that's, that's a very desirable thing, among other things he has in the case. He has a wonderful case of minerals. Gene puts in very fine minerals each year. Okay, we have here a hidden eye crystal that's about an inch and a half, to maybe an inch and three quarters, fine emerald green from hidden eye to North Carolina. Rare is an understatement. These are exceedingly hard to get a hold of. And going through this collection, I just kind of went by it because they have all the green minerals here together, but that is one superb example of a hidden night which is the emerald variety of uh, spodumene. It has to have chromium in it and North Carolina are the finest hidden nights in the world. Courtney, pleased to meet you. Too. Nice meeting you too and uh, uh, I see an exhibit here that's gorgeous so I ask you a few questions about it and I understand you brought a wonderful exhibit as well last year but this one is your personal collection. That's oh. correct. Yeah, last year I was privileged to be able to bring a selection from the Williams Carr Hayes collection, uh, a family collection that had been built up mainly in the late 1700s, early 1800s, and uh, it had moved from one big mansion to another by family acquisitions. And uh, about three years ago, the owner of the estate contacted me <coughs> suggesting I might like to come across to the castle and see if there were any minerals there that they could put on a small display. Yeah. Um, I did that and over a period of a year, we found boxes of minerals hidden away in all Ooh. parts of the castle. Okay. So it's been a, a, a three year journey in putting that together. Well, you have wonderful minerals here. If we can just direct it over the camera into this area, boy, this is really something. This middle row here is catching my eye with some of the names and the quality of minerals that represent the, uh, that uh, middle row. It's the uh, Laroconite is, I can't remember seeing a better one. That's no. fabulous, absolutely fabulous. The Spangulite, Spangulite, Calcophyllite. These are major, major minerals you got on this row here. Yes, my collecting interest like all young lads starting out in mineral collecting, you think you can collect the whole world. Yeah, exactly. And uh, over decades, you shrink the territory mm -hmm. and maybe the species and eventually try to specialize on a very small area yes. and do justice to it. Yes. The other items I have are of interest. Um, Calcosite there, that the, mini That, that is, is one of the finest ones I've seen. Fabulous, from that, absolutely uh, fabulous. Location. And the Bornanite is from the type locality. Okay. Uh, and that specimen would have been uh, taken out of the mine in about the 1780s. Wow. And uh, initially it was called Endelianite oh. after the name of the parish in which it was found. Would you believe And that? then later on, after the Count de Bornon analyzed it, it was given the name Bornanite. Pleasure meeting you and thank you thank very, you very much. much. Yeah, appreciate it. Dave, glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. And this is the first time we've met, and you've discovered some very fine minerals out of San Bernardino, California, of all places. That's right, yeah. Because it's, it's pegmatitic, all in Riverside, San Diego. Here, I guess a little bit went up into the San Bernardino area, and you have a wonderful case of uh, aquamarine specimens with uh, uh, other pegmatitic minerals, such as uh, 
albite and quartz and so forth. So tell us a little bit about your discovery, when this was found and what got you to the place to go looking for it and what have you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I've been working, uh, doing flooring, and uh, I was crying to my wife, you know, oh, all I'm doing is working, wah, wah. Yeah. And uh, she said, well, get on your quad and go out and look for some gold. And I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, excellent, you know, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> as long as, you know, it's okay with you. <laughs> so, you know, twist my arm, you know. Uh, so I went out, and as I'm leaving, I'm going out the back door, I, t I told her, I'm gonna find her emeralds and rubies. And in, oh. and, in, and in my mind, I was thinking bullets and bottle caps. So <laughs> I was out there finding bullets and bottle caps, and I, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take, take a little right off the beaten path and uh, go up this little trail that I've been wanting to go up, and I w finally went up there. And as I was walking up, I was finding crystals, green crystals, in this white stone. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I follow them up, and I find a vein of the material, and these crystals are just coming out of the, of the vein. So. I cracked a couple of them open, ran home. Liz, I found emeralds, oh my goodness. The green barrels, you know, I, wow, emeralds. So we looked them up, we found out they were aquamarines, and that was the start to okay, quite an obsession. Let me ask you this, you say green, yes. were they this color? Yeah, like to a me, green. these are more blue. Yeah, They're like green. a green, yeah, they were more washed from being on the surface, oh, you know, okay. and, and sun bleach, so they were a little greener, yes. yeah. Okay, so and, just like that, you start to, that's incredible. Yeah, and. Well, doesn't anybody ever go up in that area, and people are always. Oh, they're driving by it, always. Wow. Yeah, it's off the beaten path, just okay. by, by 100 yards. Oh. Off the beaten path, so. So then you find these things, so what happened? Did you uh, look into the stake in a claim or something, or how well, did you do that? Well, basically we, we saw that there was small dig holes that had been covered in rat's nests. So what I did out of just being a nice guy is I went up there for six months without claiming it to yeah. find out if anybody was you know, gonna claim it you know, and let me know that, this, hey, I have found That's this, right. I'm digging this. Yeah. So after about this, you know, this, the sixth month, we said we need to look in, or actually we found a piece that was jemmy. And we had been researching it and found out that if you find the jemmy materials, then you're into something. That's right. So we found that piece that I had show you, showed you earlier. Yes. And that that's what it. did it. Beautiful. We, we instantly went home that day and we started looking into, you know, making a claim. Right. And we, we had no clue on that. We were, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. So it took some time. It took yeah. some time and finally we bumbled around, put our posts up, and we did everything. We filed our paperwork and then I started digging by hand. And you're lucky it wasn't on private property that somebody else already owned. Right, so yeah. On state property and you yeah. staked a claim. Good yeah, Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, and it was in an area that was blacked out where they hadn't surveyed it, the center of that area. See, okay. So it was just pure luck. I mean, yeah. just. And this took place when? When did this all begin? Uh, 2006. Okay. Uh, yeah, 2006. Very yeah. good. And we, we'd gotten back from a trip to Hawaii. And uh, I didn't take any lava, so I figured, you know, my luck was still good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so, yeah, it's been, a, it's been an adventure. I've, I've been meeting all sorts of new people and, and getting involved with Paul Geffner, Rick Kennedy. I mean, these guys have helped me out extensively. Were I mean, you ever involved with mineral uh, mining or hunting uh, previously? I, I was into hunting um, uh, bottles, artifacts, oh, okay. just about anything I could find where I was at. So I would, I would yeah. just, I would look. Process of elimination. I would mark off an area, and I'd search that area until you know I was done. I'd mark it off. I found this and this. Yeah. I'd go to the next area, and I just keep bringing it home, and we'd research it, whatever yeah, we'd find. Yeah. So. We have a beautiful case of minerals here from the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. That's about 15 miles, I would say, here. Maybe closer, might be 10 miles. But uh, they have a wonderful museum there out in the desert with the zoo in combination. And uh, there's a number of important minerals in here, just to name one, uh, the, the copper uh, specimen here and what you have is malachite coating over native copper and when they found this in Bisbee uh, there was uh, quite a few pieces that had this coating and then they soon realized that it wasn't pseudomorphic malachite it was actually uh, malachite carbonate car uh, covering the native copper 
um, uh, crystals, spinel twin type crystallization to this piece, and they, they made it a poster in 1995, 1997. Uh, it's a beautiful poster they did of it, but that, that's a major specimen you're looking at right in the center of the case here. And of course, there's other fine pieces in here as well. But uh, if you ever do get out to the uh, Sonora uh, Desert Museum, it's well worth uh, visiting that uh, museum and combined with the, the, uh, uh, the zoo. They have a regular uh, zoo out there of uh, wonderful desert animals and everything. Here we have a case by the, they call the HAMS group, and that's the Houston Association of Mineralogical Societies. And uh, this case is simply beautiful. But uh, what's so attractive about this case that I really like is the multitude of color. I've never seen a case this size with this much different color balance in the whole case. <laughs> it's absolutely remarkable uh, showmanship. And there's, needless to say, also absolutely beautiful minerals represented in here. This is uh, a case put together by uh, a number of members of their group. So uh, every member uh, has a sample of his specimen with the other members represented in this big case. We're going to do another case uh, with the MAD group of Dallas. This is the Houston group. And it's a wonderful society, and they're doing the same thing as the uh, MAD group, putting beautiful cases together each year. Okay, we're right here at a case that's absolutely beautiful of the MAD group. Now, that's a, a mineral association of Dallas, just like the HAM group from Houston. This is the Dallas group of collectors getting together and, and offering superb uh, specimens from their private collection. And every year they put absolutely wonderful minerals uh, on display. The case that was given to them was not too desirable and they were kind of disappointed so the collector's edge, uh, Brian Lee, said well why don't you use one of our cases? So this case is actually in the collector's edge uh, booth but it belongs to the MAD group and they did a wonderful job of setting it up. The Kansanite uh, with Matrix on the side, there's been wonderful Tanzanites at this show and uh, uh, very fine pet in there, tourmaline back there with a matrix of a, uh, all bite, a quartz crystal. There's a blue cap there, and uh, another blue cap here down at the bottom, and then a matrix of blue cap. Very difficult to obtain blue caps in small size, so uh, to be honest with you, I can't remember seeing one exhibit in a case that had three of what you would call the small hand size specimens. Uh, the matrix is a little bigger than small hand size. That's like almost a full hand size. But you're looking at something that's actually very rare in that size. And needless to say, blue caps are extremely rare anyway. The demand is uh, so high that you just, you can't get them anymore. They're extremely difficult to get out of anybody. Yeah, any number of collectors, of course, love Arizona, so they, they build an Arizona collection. That's no matter right. what else they collect, they exactly. build an Arizona collection. Exactly. And this is a prime example of it. It belongs to Wayne and Donna Light from Laguna it's beautiful. Beach. And of course, as dealers, they have an opportunity once in a while to pick up something for their Very collection. And what I like about the exhibit besides Arizona Minerals is all the beautiful memorabilia that goes with right. it, the books right. and the papers right. and maps yeah. and uh, mining lamps. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. magnificent they're, exhibit. They're very conscious of that. Yeah, yeah. very right. much so. Ah, beautiful yeah. azurite yeah, slices this, this, here. These Look are good that. examples of the malachite azurite cutting grade material yeah. out of Bisbee. Yeah. Yeah, this slice was offered for sale in Bisbee. It was actually a thick piece. Okay. It was offered for sale for 50 bucks. Oh. And I bought it, and then I gave it to Wayne to slice. So he sliced it. Of course, his, his uh, pay, I guess we could say it that way, was to keep one slice. Right, and sure. so that's it, and I have a slice, and, and Evan has a slice. So that's, that's common practice. Now, is this a tiger dioptase and yes. wolf and I? Yeah, that's a that, marvelous that, thing. That can actually be called the signature mineral or uh, specimen of tiger because yes. the dioptase, cerucite, and wolf and I are the three famous minerals from there. Yes. And they very often occurred on one specimen. Yeah. So that kind of represents what tiger is all about. That's a yes, there was a lot of piece. wolf and I. In fact, 
one, one collector I know said he used to stand next to the conveyor belt coming out of the mine, and he would uh, pick wolfenite off the belt because it was all wolfenite. Yeah. It was an ore. It was used as an ore of molybdenum See during that? World War II. Sure. And because the seams were just jammed, packed with crystallized wolfenite. Uh. And uh, I, I, I've seen the figure and I don't remember, but it was several hundred tons of wolfenite crystals oh, were God. mined and went to the smelter <laughs> to extract <laughs> extract the molybdenum. Couldn't get there fast enough yeah. to get them out of there. Heart, heartbreak it hotel. Poor. Yeah. 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 Then they had a fellow by the name of George Griffith who repaired office equipment at Tiger. So he would, uh, he assembled a very nice collection because he'd go in the office and you know, he'd fix some some equipment, and, and there'd be some minerals there, and he'd do a little do a little deal. Yes. And I, I suspect there are a couple of things here from his collection. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful exhibit that oh, yeah. Ian and Donna oh, put yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Lovely exhibit. Yeah. And as you say, the memorabilia really sets it oh, off. Oh yeah. yeah. It really it's does. That it. finishing yeah. touch. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Now we're at Keith Proctor's and Mana. Uh, Proctor's uh, wonderful collection here, and every year they show magnificent minerals, and I'm starting to see a few that I have not seen before. And uh, give you an example, you can't miss it, uh, Petanero tourmaline that is absolutely magnificent. That, that crystal has to be about 17 inches long, my guess would be, but it's a long, single, bicolored tourmaline, and it really is a magnificent uh, specimen. Okay, these are very rare, these um, scepter aquamarines. This is an extraordinary one because the crystal itself is so gemmy, water clear, uh, uh, brilliance to it, and uh, it's a, just a wonderful scepter, this aquamarine crystal. I'm really taken to that specimen. That's a superb example of that. Uh, very rare to get an aquamarine, let alone get it in tourmaline. They're, they're also scarce, but the aquamarine scepters are even rarer. Now there's an azurite here from Sumeb, and if I'm not mistaken, I can almost guarantee I used to own that about 45 years ago. It's magnif magnificent, it's all complete with a beautiful crystal grouping from Sumeb, and needless to say, any Sumeb azurite is very difficult to obtain today because the mine's been closed for a number of years. Fabulous God. Uh, azurites have come from there as well as Bisbee, Arizona, and a few other locale in Morocco, and now the new one's coming out of Sonora, Mexico. So it's a beautiful azurite. But uh, they always put a beautiful, balanced collection together, lots of color, draws a lot of attention because they're beautiful minerals. Okay, what we have here is one case with one specimen in it. And the specimen that's in this case is called wolfenite, and it's from the old Yuma mine, uh, Tucson, Arizona, believe it or not. It's actually in Tucson, Arizona. Of course, it's all exhausted, closed off, and so forth. It belongs to John and Karen Caesar, and this specimen is about as good as I've ever seen. I don't remember seeing a better one. It's absolutely major, translucent to transparent, beautiful golden, deep golden color. So it's a, it's a highly important specimen uh, for what's uh, our theme this year at the show, uh, Arizona Minerals. So here's a specimen right, right in our backyard. It is a highly important specimen, not only uh, for Arizona worldwide. This is a highly important uh, wolfenite specimen. Hey, Dave. How are you doing today? Good to see you again. You got some more treasures to show us uh, that uh, we were not able to film, and now we like to film. And, and sure. in this case, give us a little spiel what you have on that group of beautiful benitoites. Holy cow. Sure. We'll pick a few highlights we had for the main show. Yeah. This is the benitoite set belonging to Ed Swoboda. Okay. He collected it with Pete Bancroft. And believe it or not, starting in the late 1920s wow. through the 30s. Wow. And that's about 130 carats of clean benitoite. Fantastic. That's one in a lifetime you'll see anything like this. This is totally unique to have that many benitoites in one place like this at once. Yeah. Fabulous thing. Well, and now the deposit's gone. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone. A, yeah. Mined out. But you just never see anybody with this many benitoites. That's, that's a marvelous setup there. Yeah. Thank you. Want to look at a mineral now? Yeah, let's see what you got new in minerals. All right. 
We talked about the uh, Boda collection already. That We're is premiering correct. a number of Boda pieces. Yeah. But I also have minerals from the Dick Heck, Illinois okay. collection. Beautiful. Dick what was a, a fluoride. very well known Midwest collector. Yeah, beautiful. The purple uh, top with the orange. This is from Illinois. I believe it's Illinois, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it looks like Illinois. Superb piece. Absolutely superb. Razor sharp and perfect. That's lovely. What a beautiful Thanks. color. Purple and golden orange. So that's new. I remember that. Yeah. So I have new material from that collection. Okay. And then uh, as far as what's really new, uh, I've been saving up a year new material from this new Chinese location, okay. Inner Mongolia. Oh, we have a case okay. of it here. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> It's like a big these are balloon. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. What's so nice about these, they're so translucent and the pink just radiates through the piece. It isn't just at the surface, it actually radiates all the way through. It has a nice, delicate translucency and beautiful. What a, it glows. Look at that. That's fantastic. So, so that's there's. New. That's yeah. from Mongolia? Inner Mongolia. Okay. It's actually part of China. Okay, very good. Beautiful. And there's uh, wonderful ilvites, fluorites, calcite, and okay. the like. Beautiful. There's oh, more. that beautiful thing. And I'll tell you, the, the object I'm most proud of having here is actually over here, if you want to okay. talk about it. Sure. I think what's really special, and I, I'm honored to have them, yes. are these two pieces from what's called the six-pack pocket. This was found in 1984 in the Tourmaline Queen mine, yes. but the public was completely unaware of the existence of very the pocket. Very so, including yeah. myself. I never yeah. knew it existed. It was Fantastic. kept very, very quiet. Oh, beautiful. Oh. And Six pack, that's cute, that yeah. name. And these are the two premier pieces from the pocket, the largest. And this was in 1984? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And it was kept secret all this time. It's a long story, but yes. suffice to say, now they've been back in the hands of Ed Swoboda, who I owned the mine. See. Right. And this is actually Ed's favorite piece, perhaps the most aesthetic from the pocket. Okay. This is the largest and the namesake piece of the pocket. Yeah. That is beautiful. I got it. Good. Yeah. I was going to let you hold the okay. other one here. Okay. Okay. Now, you say Ed is kind of hanging on to this one? Yeah, yeah, he Beautiful. might take offers, but I think he's keeping it. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, that is all right. Totally different than the blue caps. Very like, different. Totally different. It's beautiful. It's the same and mine 12 years after the famous blue caps. That's but right, when you no, think of it. Nobody knew about them. Never heard a mention about yeah. it. Incredible. Lovely. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Good work. Bye. Last year, in doing our minerals, you did Holy Cow 13 times. Oh my goodness. Uh, this year I've How kept- How many times? How many times? Uh, actually, I only have seven this year. Okay. I kept count. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've had some food here, and there's just one restaurant that uh, uh, needs some food, and I'll discuss it with you. So, Dave, do you want to see some cool things? Are we on? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we got to at least say hello or something. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, who, is this try. your son? No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might see so now James. <laughs> I, thought, I didn't know who he is. If he is my son, I said I could take over. I'm going. <laughs> All right. Don't walk in front of me. I didn't know you were filming. I just got a ton of your ear now. Gin tonic. Yeah. Gin tonic. Yeah. <laughs> again. Here it is again. <laughs> Here, fell off the mountain, and oh my God, he's in bad shape. But he's okay now. Oh, he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, How long have you been in town? Um, I live here. <laughs> 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 You're like, hmm. I, I, I have. I know you're not recording now. No, I am recording. Oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, we are rolling. Hang on, we have no keys for this. We, we have no keys for this. We are not rolling. Yeah. What is wrong with him? This guy is great. He's, he's not guy. ready for yeah. prime time, actually. You know that, right? <laughs> he's, he's a whack job. I love him, too, but yeah. he's a whack job. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, what was it? <laughs> you said something earlier. What's that terminate? I don't have my glasses on. I think it is. I don't know what is that angle. <laughs> <Dave>. <laughs> The one this year, is fantastic. The, yeah. the, the one year I don't have a phallic-shaped rock, he picks one. 